Hey, what's up guys? Maka here. I'll be taking you through Inside, a new game by Play Dead who made Limbo. I'll be taking you through the entire game in one sitting. This is a live recording. I will probably die only a few times, but uh, it really shouldn't impact uh, the length of the video too, too much. Let me quickly turn up the brightness for you guys so that you, you can see it a little better on your end. And uh, yeah, I'll be showing you how to get all 100% of the gamer score, including all 13 of the secrets and then the 14th secret for the last achievement. So following this guide, you'll get around 1000 gamer score in two hours. And you shouldn't really have too much to miss. Generally speaking, Inside, in my opinion, is a much easier game than Limbo was in terms of minimizing your deaths, which isn't even a priority. You should be able to go through the game pretty fast without really worrying. Uh, this first little section is basically sneaking through, and I won't be commenting through the whole video, but I will be coming in and out of commentary during key points, uh, primarily the 13 secrets and any tricky puzzles. So yeah, uh, after you sneak down here, just make sure you wait until the guards kind of cross the line of sight so you can sneak beyond their, um, their viewpoint. Don't just wait for the flashlight. You actually have to wait for the dude uh, in, the, in the, the closer one to actually pass by, and then you can start walking. Uh, this section's pretty easy, and there's a couple of sections that are really truly trial and error where the game is quite literally designed to make you die. I'll be trying to just talk about those and not actually die for you guys to obviously minimize the amount of time and the amount of mistakes in the video. Again, uh, I'm guessing about two hours, but you can probably judge how long uh, it'll take you based on how long this video ends up being. Keep in mind, there's about a 20 minute section at the end of the game that is uh, done after already having a thousand gamer score. So I highly do recommend that you actually do beat this game on your own. Or if you're having troubles with any puzzles, feel free to reference the guide. Or if you really don't care, even though the game deserves to be played, just go through on your first uh, playthrough uh, with this video. Upon coming down here, you will be noticed by a dog. This is 100% mandatory and cannot be missed. Um, just keep running, keep walking forward and do not turn back in any circumstance. Upon reaching the very, very end of this section, make sure you jump across the gap and you'll grab onto the ledges, pull yourself up and continue forward. During this section, you'll run through a forest and a couple dudes in the forest will notice you with their flashlight. Just keep running until you meet the first car. Um, you might have to jump over a few logs here and there to make sure you don't lose too much time on your running. Alright, so here's actually the car first. And what we're going to need to do is the car is going to start shining its flashlight. You're supposed to kind of die here and figure it out for yourself, but drop down and go to the left, hide behind this rock, and wait for the car to pass by, like, quite a bit. And then he'll turn his flashlight in another direction, and then you can keep walking. Here's the part I was mentioning earlier where the flashlights see you. I was a little premature, but more or less the same thing. So the guy will notice you and he'll start chasing you. Uh, just jump over the logs. I don't know if they actually slow you down, but I would imagine they might. Once you get behind this RV, you have to wait for the dude in the car to pass by. And then continue running forward. Now you're getting chased by two dudes. Eventually they'll uh, send their dogs after you. Just keep running and they can't really hit you. I'm literally just holding left. Uh, right on the, deep, on the uh, control stick. I jump over the logs just to be safe. Again, these dogs can't catch you if you manage to jump into the water. And here is our very first collectible. After jumping into the water, get to the surface and swim to the very left. This is just to make sure you have enough air. Now go down and to the left in order to uh, get to the secret area. Once up here, find the ladder or the ledge you can grab onto. Grab on to this and shake the pillar to the left and then to the right to make it fall. Jump on the pillar and uh, access the, the secret. In terms of controls, obviously we're using our analog stick to move left and right. 
We are using the A button to jump on an Xbox One controller, and I personally use X to interact with. 70 Gamer Score for Murky Water. That is our first collectible or secret. We'll be calling them for the rest of the video. So there's a total of 13 of those types of secrets, and then one ultimate secret at the end that requires the first 13. So yeah, they're not too bad for the most part. Here we're going to be swimming. We'll notice that the spotlight is on the water. Uh, just dunk your head under and swim under the spotlight so they don't see you. Uh, you get about three gulps underwater. You'll feel your controller vibrate, and you'll see some air expelled from your character's mouth. That can give you a general idea of how close you are to drowning. So now we reach the cornfield. This is checkpoint seven. If you're ever wondering how to check your checkpoints, if I'm referencing something and you're looking for something, you can go to load and look through them here. I have all of them unlocked from a uh, previous playthrough. Jump over the fence into the cornfield. And what you'll want to do is basically just keep tapping X, which is the interact button, as you run through the uh, cornfield. About 80% of the way through, there will be a small gap and um, you'll, your character will stop. That means he's uh, holding on to a door that's on the ground. And then you're going to want to lift that door by pressing up. And then you can go down into the cellar. And then to the left, through here, into this uh, dark room where you'll find your second secret. Bam, let's keep going. Uh, there is a secret ending in this game, which is to the right of this room. But we would need to come back after finding all the secrets and uh, turning on the power on the machine at the very end. Obviously, this video will be completely full of spoilers, so that should be pretty self-explanatory. As you run through the cornfield here, you'll notice some small chicks uh, will start following you. Um, it's That's pretty simple. You'll need to use them in order to solve one of the next puzzles. So once you reach the end of this, you'll reach a farmhouse where there is a rope. Uh, which is the first time you use a rope. The rope mechanic is pretty simple and works across basically every game you've ever played. Jump on the rope and swing on the rope. Jump off the rope at the right time and you keep your momentum. So we're going to climb. Swing left. Swing right. Jump through the window. Once inside, drop down. Feel free to turn on the engine first. This might help you a little bit. Although it's not necessary, so just pull it to the left three times and it'll start. Now that the engine started, go to the left and open the door for the chicks to come in so they can follow you. I'll kind of ex be explaining the solutions to the puzzles more so than the actual puzzles themselves for the most part. After you open the door, they'll follow you. Run to the very right of the screen to get them all the way to the right. Uh, just keep waiting for them to follow you. They will eventually come. And once they reach the all the way to the right, you do need to time this so that make sure they're all the way. You don't need all of them, by the way, just the majority of them. Go back to the left and then hit the switch, which will suck them up through the little air vent. And then they'll get pushed out of the top into the box to knock it down. They don't actually die, which I thought they would the first time I played. From then on there, just push the box, jump up, jump up, and leave them behind. Unfortunately, uh, we don't ever see them again in the game. All right, now we're on top of a farmhouse. You'll notice that there is a yellow electrical cable on the f uh, roof of the farmhouse. These yellow wires are always a very good indicator that there is a nearby secret, as the secret uh, is basically like a gen uh, an orb of power. So jump down and then into the wagon of dead pigs. Pull it to the left, jump up, pull a plank off of the uh, farmhouse, uh, get into the farmhouse by sneaking into that plank you just pulled out. About halfway through, you'll notice this rope, jump on the rope. You'll want to swing to the left, 
Uh, I'd like to get pretty decently high on the rope to make sure that I make it. I, I do do two swings here just to make sure I don't waste my time and then jump across the gap and interact with the secret. That should be three of 13 for you. Jump down and let's continue. Uh, the achievements uh, generally come pretty fast early on in the game. There's a couple of sections where they come a little bit slower than usual. Um, but for the most part, the first, I think, four are uh, quite quick. Pull the cart to the right, jump on the cart, and use the cart to get over the fence. Now you're going to be... Uh, let's just see. We're going to walk through some water. Although I have played the game fully through about two times, um, the sequence of puzzles isn't always perfect in my mind, although my confidence in doing them is quite high. All right, so we hop over this fence, jump across. You don't actually need to make the jump off the fence. It just, I guess, helps for time. Um, and then you will get attacked by a pig. It's going to be the pig behind us. What you're going to want to do is run into the pig and jump as it's charging you. Don't have your back turned towards the pig as it as you jump or else you'll get fall, you'll fall to the ground and uh you won't make as much progress uh that way it'll take you a lot longer to do this and you're a lot more likely to die as well you're going to want to get the pig through the shed and then follow him in jump over him almost missed that jump and then bring him all the way to the right hand side so he hits his head on the uh the cement wall here or the uh concrete after he does that, pull off his tail. And then you're going to use him uh, to stand up on to get onto the mind controller, which is uh, actually a little bit similar to some of the stuff in Limbo. Uh, these look a little bit different and act a little bit differently than those, though. So you're going to jump on here, and basically anything you do, the people on the screen will do. So we're going to go to the right-hand side to get these two dudes down here, bring those two dudes to the right-hand side, and raise the gate. Uh, what was it? So we will need... There we go. Get the first two dudes to hold the gate and then the, the other two dudes to come by. So that all four of them are on it. And then have all four of them push forward here. Sorry for that small mistake. Uh, if they pull it, they'll knock down that. And then you can push down on the D-pad, press A in order to uh, unhook yourself. We'll continue forward. Lift the gate to get under it. And we are outside. This puzzle, just push the cart all the way in, which will lower the chain enough for you to be able to jump to it. Your instinct might be to pull the cart towards the chain so you can get a you know bigger boost, but that's not the way to do it. Swing left, swing right, and make the jump to the right-hand side. Open the window, and through we go. So now there's some birds. They fly away. They're kind of useless. I don't really know what they do, to be completely honest. Uh, you see that there is a gigantic safe above us. Uh, we'll need to get that uh, in order to progress the story and in order to get our next secret. This puzzle is somewhat simplistic. Uh, they get a little bit more challenging, but once you know the solutions, they're really not that bad. So get up onto here, cross here, uh, pull this so that it goes this way. And then raise it as high as it can go. And now we can use that to jump across the gap we needed to jump across.
And once we're up here, push the safe down and make sure you don't get caught on the piece of wood that it's going to take out. I don't know if you need to take the ladder. Uh, it looks like you should be able to jump down without dying, but don't take my word on it. Based on the height, though, you should make it. So coming up right here is our next secret. Jump down the hole. Instead of going to the left, follow the yellow wire to the right. Pull open the vent. Go inside. And uh, collect the secret. So for this one, we're going to want to open the gate. Get the mind reader. And uh, they're basically opposite. So you need to get the one guy to come out of the gate. Then come off the mind reader and close the gate. Now you'll just need, need to essentially work them so that they're both touching the outer edges. And then work them on in. And it's that simple. Up the ladder to the rooftops. Our next secret is about five seconds in front of us here. You'll come to a rooftop with a large C on it and the rest of the letters have been knocked down. And you'll have to slide down that roof and jump across a small gap onto a pipe. So do that. Now you'll see the yellow cable behind us, so instead of going up the pipe like the game would want us, go down to the bottom of the pipe and make the jump across to the ladder. Climb down to the bottom of the ladder. Where we can find, I believe, secret number five, but let's double check that we are on the same page. Feel free to open up your achievements as well to make sure you have the same as me. We have five for 350, all worth 70. Get to the top of the ladder, jump back to the pipe, climb the pipe, and proceed. I think the next collectible is in quite a while, though. That's a mandatory little part of the game to get you down here. This is a very limbo-esque rooftop, if you didn't notice. For the for going on pipes and ladders down, you want to approach them slowly. I had a couple problems where if I came at them too fast, I'd end up flying off the edge of the roof and killing myself from fall damage. Get to the bottom here and then basically just pry open this door three or four times. After you pry it open, you can walk through it. Push the ladder over instead of climbing it. And then climb it. Alright, so here there's a large button and it looks so tempting. Don't push it. You're meant to die here so that you know, you realize that you, sh you have to do a uh, sequence of events in a different order. Um, but I already know that. So we're going to go to the end and open the elevator first. Then we're going to go back and press that big tempting button. Now these uh, robots in the back will start scanning with lights. Just make sure you don't get caught in their light. So use the shadow of these beams to block yourself and make sure you're timing it properly. And then go in the elevator, click the button. I think you have to stay on the right side of the elevator, but I'm not 100% sure. If you're fast enough, it might not matter. Now on the left of the screen, it looks like there's some stuff we might be able to climb and backtrack and find something cool. I haven't found a way to do anything there. I think that those are just decorations. All right, go to the right-hand side. Across the plank of wood and then it's mandatory that you fall through this hole 
and basically just play along with everything that everyone does for the next minute or so. At any point, turn around and begin to walk left. You will immediately be shot. Even if the spacing seems a little bit off, as long as you're not too far off the middle, you won't be, uh, you know, eliminated. Just make sure you do not turn left. The timing's important, but not that important. I missed that jump. I was very early on the first jump, but they still gave it to me. In the second zone, you do have to turn left, though. Keep that in mind. Just follow what everyone's doing. try to make a run for it don't make a run for it until you basically have to even though the machine is not watching us right now just keep waiting you can hear your heart beating at this point the dog gets mad at you and you run The dog can't catch you as long as you continue running the whole time forward. And then for this part, there's another dog. For the, for these dogs, you're going to have to time them a little bit. Stay at the bottom until this dog is very close to you. And then jump up. And now you can make it across. If you didn't wait at the bottom there, you wouldn't have made it. Now we're going to need to use the mind controller to push the mine cart. I think I remember this one. I think we have to let ourselves go here. Yep. Now go down and push the red box onto the switch. <clears throat> now go back onto the mind controller. And uh, we can continue forward. So for this one, go to the very end and then use your follower to get the, the second mind controller. And then pull this cart here and jump on top of the switch. And, oh, I screwed that one up a little bit. Actually, what we're going to want to do instead of that, sorry, I apologize, is go here, drop. Nope, I screwed that one up. Again, I apologize. We have to make sure we're 
over this area. So that when this guy goes there, we can drop down for the other two dudes. And then we can go back to the mind controller and only this dude will be possessed. I apologize for that. Small, small blunder. Hopefully you can forgive me. So for this one, you want to position yourself like as far to the left of the square at the bottom. You don't have to be like super, super close, but you want to open it all the way. And then you have to drop down as yourself. And if you weren't in the right area, obviously you wouldn't have made that. Once we're down here, go to the left and uh, grab this um, plank. Now you can take the plank to the right. And this next puzzle coming up, from what I remember, is kind of stupid. Um, the timing on it isn't the best, so you kind of have to take your time slowly unless you risk dying. Let me just quickly refresh my memory as to what the next collectible is. Yeah, we're good. Press the button. Basically, the door will only be open if uh, there's not water. You do have to bring... Oh, sorry, I apologize. We're good. So for this one, fill up the water to the top. You'll notice the door on the right will open. Or close rather so what we need to do um, this one's kind of a timed one essentially swim straight down push the button and then swim straight to the right if you're fast enough you'll make it on the ledge the water will drain and the door will open Now we're pulling the suitcase back. And then just leave the suitcase right there below the chain. That's so that when you fill the water, um, it's in the right place. You can drag it while you're in the water. It's just probably easier to set up that way. You don't have to be as fast as I did it. You can really take your time for this one. Grab onto the chain and get to the top. All right. Wait for the wait for the beam of light to go from left to right. Don't jump don't jump down right away. Keep an eye on the shadow pattern, that, that light that the uh, beam is generating. We need to use that to protect ourselves from this beam. In order to lower the uh, elevator that we need to get into, we'll be rotating clockwise, and we'll need to do this at least three or four times um, in order to make it. If you try to do it all at once, you don't have enough time, you will get caught by the light, and you will be killed. If you're really quick, you can do it in three turns. If you want to be a little safe, I highly recommend four. I'm going to go for three because I know I'll make it. Don't jump across the gap quite yet. I think there's a second spotlight which moves in coordination with the other one. It might be a little bit further, though. There it is. So I guess it you have to actually jump onto the ledge for it to trigger. Use the beam. Make sure you uh, 
go under the beam and then cross to the right hand side as it crosses over you and you're gonna have to be pretty quick here open the hatch and jump down if you weren't quick enough you probably got caught Jump under the chain and shimmy down. I think we might be shimming into water, but I'm not going to take the chance and uh, jump. All right. So we go to the right-hand side. I think I still haven't died, so I'm, gonna, I'm happy with that. It's pretty easy to make a couple stupid mistakes, and you should probably assume you'll die a couple times. I believe on my first playthrough I died 41 times, to give you a little bit of perspective. There will be dogs that chase you. You have to time the dogs in a specific way in order to uh, accomplish your goal. So, for the first dog here, this seems very risky. But essentially you have to wait for the dog to jump in after you. Unless he doesn't come running. Yeah, so after he comes running, jump into the water. And apparently you get devoured by him. That's not what happened on my other playthrough at all. Essentially, you're trying to trick the dog into getting into the water. And that will buy you enough time to make the entire run across. If you aren't fast enough, you won't make the run. And he got me again. Let's try that one more time. If it doesn't work, let's try to figure something else out. This definitely worked for me on my on my first two runs. Maybe I'm supposed to be deeper. Or not as deep. Let's try again. I apologize. I don't know. I was actually so certain this was the method that um, I'm surprised it's not. Let's go a little deeper. Interesting, interesting. The problem is I know for a fact that if you don't get him in the water, you won't be able to make it across. So, I do believe we have to get him into the water. Let's just dive deep. Let him dive into the water. And there we go. You have to dive straight down. And then he'll take extra long to get out of the water. And by that time, you'll make it down. Just make sure you dive down deep. And uh, directly. For these, what we need to do is get onto the fence and stay pretty high. I'm going to get the game volume a little lower here. Um... And you need to jump off the fence at the top of the fence or else you'll fall and you won't have enough time to pull a plank. You pull one plank and then you switch sides. Get to the top, jump across, make them come towards you. As soon as they run away, you can jump back on the fence. Just don't change sides. Change sides as soon as they're here and then jump from the top again. This last one is a little risky. It tends to be a very close call. And then you want to go forward instead of back to the fence. And then that little smash of the dresser is automatic. Down the ladder. All we need here is a little bit of patience. You need to wait for both of these guys to go inside of the workshop. Just stay back here in the shadows. There's nothing you can do to speed this up or 
trigger anything specific. Just keep waiting. If you're too quick, they'll spot you and they will choke you out or snap your neck. I tend to wait until both of them are past the horizon of the building, which uh, has worked for me flawlessly every time. Jump down. And into the boat. And this is our submarine. Our submarine pilots the same as our character moves. You can use the analog stick. And then you would hold A to get a charge. Let go of A to actually charge. Uh, you will need that mechanic to get past this door, for example. And get past this uh, wood wooden barrier. I believe we go to the right and down. Your light shines based on where you are aiming, by the way. So here all you need to do is get a couple cracks in the wall. You don't need to get the whole wall. Just get like a really good crack right at the top. That should be enough for you. Uh, get to the top here and exit your submarine. Swim through the crack. Climb to the top of this rope. Go to the right and you'll notice a button. This button releases a large amount of like tanks. So you're gonna have to run away as soon as they come out. Do not jump, just keep running. Do not jump at the end or you'll get crushed against the wall. Go straight into the water and dive down. I'm not, let's check. I don't believe I've done, yeah, I have. Uh, no, I haven't. So there is another switch we need to grab now to open up the door, which will be in that same area now, but without the tanks, we'll be able to access it. This area introduces you, this is chapter like 29 by the way out of 69, so we're like almost halfway done the game. This will introduce you into these push boxes. Just pull the knob and uh, physics happen. You want to wait till the very peak to do your jump or else you won't make it. Use this rope to swing across and through the hole. Do not drop down. After landing in here, you can now access this button, which opens the door in front of you, which is the door we need. Drop down into the water, swim through the hole you came in, and enter your sub. Charge yourself through the hole or miss completely like I did, one or the other.
go down here and go through this red door with a plank across it. You notice the ladders behind us. This is our next secret. There are wires. If you follow them down, you'll see the yellow cables. You will find this. Charge into it from the right hand side and then go into here. Follow down and to the left. And this is actually one of the only ones where there's an actual puzzle to be solved just to grab it. So pull your submarine all the way to the right and then hop off onto the ladder and climb your way to the top. Use the mind controller to get your first follower onto the top of the submarine. If he falls in the water, you can just climb the sub. As long as he's on top, you're good. Drop down as yourself and then get into your sub. Hopefully he doesn't fall off. He shouldn't, but you never know. And then just charge directly up. All right, park your sub back on the right-hand side. You don't need to actually park it here. It doesn't matter where you park it as long as you come back up to the first mine reader. Once you have both guys connected to these two mine readers, you get a guy in the background who is able to pick up the collectible. Awesome. Get back in your sub and let's continue the game. Coming up, we have our first kind of like enemy experience. It's really not that hard, so you don't have much to worry about as long as you generally know the rules of the fight. They aren't that hard to follow at all. Bash through this red door. And essentially, there's going to be a monster thing. Um, any moment now. Maybe I was a little early. Yeah, so we're going to have to uh, get G. So once you have your submarine here, park it like beyond to the right of these pipes. As long as, uh, as, long as if it sinks, it would sink to the right of the pipes, you're fine. Jump back down into the water. And you have to locate a switch. Now, keep in mind, you won't have enough uh, air to swim all the way to the switch in one go. You have to swim from directly above the switch, directly down, and then you can swim kind of across. And you'll be making your way back towards your sub. You probably will have to come up for air first, though. You can take your time here. I don't think uh, you have to rush because you'll be able to swim across no matter what. Get into your sub. Now you'll notice that G is open. Just jump through the gap. I was a little premature about that monster battle I mentioned. I think it might be after these doors then. And I completely missed my charge. And I missed two charges in a row. Oh, man. All right, here we go. So you'll see this girl. Essentially, you have to shine your light on her for her not to approach you. So you got to have to move and then get her uninterested. Move and then get her uninterested. Just keep doing that and you should be fine during this section. It's really not that difficult at all. And then for this, as you approach this door, make sure that you shine her your light on her right before going through it. Go up and then crash the door to block her off. I don't know if she swims in there, what happens, um, but you don't want her swimming in there. From there, go up. You'll notice the uh, wood ceiling. You'll have to charge it twice. And the next secret is just beyond this charge. Go to the left instead of the right.
As you reach the very left, you'll notice some pipes on the wall. You'll have to charge into them twice to destroy them. <clears throat> After you destroy them, destroy them. Um, get out of your submarine and make the jump to here. Up on here, up on the ladder. <clears throat> and to the left. Back in the sub we go, and then to the right. do have to get out of our submarine at this point. And now we'll do one of the only open area sections of the game. It's actually a pretty long section. Um, and even though it is kind of open area, there is a somewhat linear way to actually beat it. So, uh, yeah. Push through the door. All right, you'll notice there's a guy to our left. Uh, we need like six dudes in order to be able to lift that gate. So just ignore him. I'm basically going to go starting from the bottom right and going counterclockwise about. Um, you'll see what I mean as we go through here. I've reached an elevator. Elevator has no power, so let's start the power first by using the switch. You will notice that there's a number. That's how many people we need on the plate. We need 20 people on the push plate in order to uh, activate it. We'll start off by going downstairs and to the right. Uh, this will allow us to get the mind controller helmet thing. And uh, from then on there, any, any person we come by will start following us. Keep running past this ladder, which might look a little tempting. Run past these dudes who don't really care about you. Swim under this. Might seem like you might not make it. It'll be close, but you should make it. Make sure you grab air in this pocket and then do it again. Use these ropes to swing across. I would recommend using two rope swings each time just to be safe. Uh, you won't die if you miss, but it just takes a while. Just jump off the ledge head first in and bam they will catch you 
So that's a good thing to know. Basically, if there if there are any of them underneath you available, they will catch you. This is the jumping mechanic. Essentially, if you get them under an area you need to jump and push up, they will push you. Remember this. This is quite important for later. If you get stuck, you might wonder why. You'll need to learn how to jump like that. Um, take this cart down in order to go pick them up. They'll hop on on their own. Um, basically, you don't really control them in the sense that previously they would only do what we did. Now they basically are puppy dogs and they follow us everywhere. And they help us, but they don't... You know, when you push left, they don't push left, right? Does that make sense? Now, we can continue left, but I don't think we have enough dudes. You know what? Let's just check anyways. Essentially... We might not have enough dudes to pull a giant cart that weighs a lot. So if we don't, we'll have to return here. But I think we might, because this first group of dudes is actually pretty big. Bigger than I imagined. So grab this gigantic cart and pull it. Perfect. It does work. You'll want to pull it right underneath the opening in the, in the ceiling so that when you drop down, you would land somewhere in the front of it. So you might want to pull it a little bit further than might seem necessary. There is a reason for this. It's because the cart starts moving before you fall through the hole. So you want to compensate a little bit for the amount it moves while you're dropping. Um, but it's not really a, a huge deal. Just fall through the hole. I might have almost compensated too much. And they'll push you the rest of the way as long as you're standing on it. You don't have to touch anything. Now, right here in front of us, you notice the yellow cable. Yep, there is a secret there. Note, we do not have what we need to get it yet. So first, climb up. Run across. We'll need to grab the dudes that are caged up on the top left. To do so, move this box. Pull the okay. Pull the <laughs> pull the knob and then push the box under the the yellow box as it's in the air. Go on top and now pull the knob while you're standing on it. You will now have enough height to grab onto the cage, pulling them down with you. Uh, these are your new followers, and you'll need them for the secret. I was about to say, I don't think I've died, but there was that one part where the dogs ripped me apart like six times. All right, jump down, and then you'll need their help to pull the plank of wood. Once they do that, you can now crawl through. Go down the ladder. If you go too fast, you might run off the edge and die, as I've done too many times before. To the left, and pick up the torch. You will now need to use the torch to fend yourself off from the wolves. And basically you just need to make your way all the way to the left of this area. If a wolf is coming at you, point the torch in its direction for it to back off. So this one behind me, I needed it to back off. I turned around a little bit. I'm being a little bit risky because I want to do this a little fast. Uh, I highly recommend you take this a little bit slower. And even though I waved it back what I thought was in time, unfortunately, the game didn't think it was in time and I got ripped apart. So let's do that again. I definitely swung it in time, in my opinion. But we'll give the benefit of the doubt to the game. We'll take it a little bit slower this time then, just to be safe. It becomes a little bit problematic when there's the full four dogs. Because if they take turns attacking you, it can you have to turn back and forth quite a bit. And this shouldn't be about reflex, as much as it might seem like it is for me. If you take your time, 
you should be pretty successful even though it might look like I'm basing my reactions on on skill alone all right now that we're here pull the knob they run off when they hear that noise and you'll unlock the pack mentality let's double check with our achievements to make sure we're on pace we have eight for 560 Under the waterfall, the torch gets, ex you know, extinguished. You throw it away, and back up the ladder we go. What's the death count? Four? I think I'd had three times on that first dog, and then once on these wolves. So we're going to go back across here, and now we have basically like two sets of dudes. We have a decent amount here. Um, we're going to ride the elevator all the way to the top. We're going to skip the middle section for, for a quick sec here. Make sure they're all in the elevator before you close it, if it's even possible to. Top floor. <clears throat> Once on the top floor, we're going to start off by going right. Again, the the order is is not the biggest deal here. I'm just going right because I think it's going to be the fast it's going to result in the fastest time for me. Stand on the corner and then have them lift you. Jump across to get up here. This is probably the hidden body if you were always one person short. This was probably why. This one's very well hidden and it doesn't seem very intuitive to have your guys throw you up there. Pull the body down. He doesn't land directly on the pressure sensor, but we'll pull his body uh, into it later. Now we'll run across to the left on the top floor and we'll push down a gigantic crate with more followers in it. Speaking of followers, follow me on Twitter, at PMACA1991. I'm a cool dude. Humble brag. All right, from here, just push down these guys. Now, you'd imagine that they would die based on the height you're falling, but they don't. By the way, this is all in the same checkpoint in the game, which is... This is the only checkpoint that's probably longer than, like, three minutes. Go to the middle floor. These guys will get up and now start following you. So that's three more. Go all the way to the end in order to lift the gate that we were next to when we came into the area. Go inside. And then have your followers, sorry, throw you to the platform. For this one, you just need to use the physics of the cart a little bit. So pull it. As they're about halfway, maybe 55%, pull it back. And they should make it across. Might take you one or two tries, but it's not too bad. Now we have everyone we need other than, if you actually count them, there's probably like 16 or something. Uh, there's three dudes that kind of chill next to the pressure pad we need to go to. And then there's the dead body. So you yourself actually do count as one, so there's going to be 18 dudes, a dead body, and you. 
Um, drag the dead body onto the pressure plate. And you get all 20, and you can just leave the pressure plate. You don't have to, like, wait or anything. Now, this part is just all about timing, to be honest. Um, essentially, let me just quickly, quickly check what the next achievement is. Just to make sure. Okay, dive back in. We're good. All right. To push this box um, just a little bit past the horizon of, like, the level. It'll blow up, run across as fast as you can, and then stop behind the cover. I'm going to wait an extra sonar pulse to make sure I make it. If you're really quick, you can do it all in one go. Pull the lever. For this one, wait for another sonar pulse, pull the lever, and then run. I'm going to make it in one go, although feel free to be a lot more safe than I am. Now, this is a checkpoint, and you can actually stop that rotating thing, but you shouldn't. Time the uh, rotation of that item with the sonar pulses in order to make it up, and I'm going to die. So, what you do need to do is you do need to stop it but you need it to be moving while you move through the puzzle. Essentially what you're gonna do is, I didn't realize I did this both times, but essentially what you wanna do is stop it when it's like perfectly in the middle of the ladder, wait for a pulse, and then as soon as the pulse goes off, start it. Now the pulses and the positions of that piece are, I think I uh, started it a little bit too late to be honest, so we're gonna have to wait another loop probably. We're going to pause it where it's pretty low on the ladder. We're going to wait for the pulse, and we're going to start it really quickly. Essentially, when there's another pulse, you want that item to be right above uh, blocking the uh, platform on the right. Jump on here to make sure you're blocked from the sonar pulse. You'll make it to the top where you'll be blocked again. If you're really, really quick, you can make it all in one go, but I highly recommend you don't. Wait for that pulse and then jump across and follow this piece down so that you're shielded. As soon as you're shielded, run across to the end. Hopefully that made sense. Now, you do need to do a little bit of timing here. There's going to be a pulse. Jump on the box, pull it, wait for the next pulse, and then jump on the box. You have to make sure you're not in that opening while it goes across. For here, this one's all about timing and and uh, not timing your character, but more timing the pulses. So there's the small windows and the big windows, but those don't really matter. What you want to realize is there's a bridge directly in front of me. As soon as there's a pulse, you want to start running across the bridge. If you're not fast enough on the reflex, you'll be blown off the bridge with the next sonar pulse. I was actually pretty close there. Carry yourself all the way to the end, and then block yourself with this handle on the bottom, and keep running. Wait, 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 sonar pulse, make sure you're in the shadow. That was all really fast. You can rewatch it in slow-mo or whatever you need. You just gotta make sure you are in the right section of uh, cover right when the sonar pulse goes off. Now you can go into the elevator, which you'll need to open, and proceed. I will take a sip of water now.
Now, unfortunately, I screwed that up, and I don't know why. For some reason, it wouldn't let me swim through the crack I'm supposed to. It was like glitching an invisible wall for me for some reason. So well, actually what you need to do, and that's completely my fault, is you need to actually open the, the door from the right. I thought you were supposed to swim through the left. Open the door from the right, and then go through the hole. That's totally my fault. Pull the knob. And, uh... Swing across to the left. And now you do need to do this in one... Okay, I, I did that a little bit wrong. You do need to do this in like one smooth movement. You're going to hold this open until it's fully open. And then in one smooth move, you need to make it on the rope, one swing, and through the door. There we go. All right, for this one, we're gonna start the right one, move to the left one, start the left one, go back to the right one, let it go, jump across, and then hit the button to get the left one stuck. Then we go back, and now we're gonna get back on top of that left one. Pull the knob. And jump to the right. Alright, so this one... Hmm. We just go into the water. I. Th yeah, okay. So there's the, the girl from the ring, essentially, there. Uh, just keep swimming. I think she starts chasing you. Yup. Uh, just quickly get to the top of the water and pull yourself on the rope. Don't let your feet dip in the water. Or she will catch you and eat you. Essentially, just wait for her to fully descend. And then jump at the height of that to make sure you have enough time to swim to the next rope before she catches you. Where you can climb up to the top. And from here, climb up again. If you don't climb up again, you won't make enough uh, distance on your jump. Go to the left, the right rather, and jump as far as you can, as late as you can, in order to barely make it through. Alright, now for this part, we have to continue forward, and we're going to tease the girl from the ring just a little bit. Um, get up here. And then get on this chain and click the button. The chain doesn't move based on your movements. The chain is on a like a set path. Essentially what you need is you need for your feet to dip into the water right when the chain is at the most left part of its course. This will get the girl to come chase you. Pull up right as she's there. And it'll go back and climb up so that your feet don't dip back in the water. We do this so that we have we build up an, uh, more time to swim across here. If we didn't do that, she would have caught us much, much faster. Push the button to make sure she gets caught behind you. Use the rope swing here. I'm going to do an extra swing just to make sure I make it. We're going to go through this vault door where we'll find our next secret. Now for this secret, you do have to die. 
It's mandatory because once you get into the secret, you can't get out of it without dying. Um, this one's not too bad. So what we want to do is jump into this hole. And you can either jump down. Let's just do it. We'll do it this way. Jump down here and wait for the girl to come swimming. When she's relatively close to you, jump up. Make sure she doesn't grab your feet. She will kill you, pull you under, whatever. Once she's there, go back to the left. And now you'll buy yourself enough time to dive in and follow the path without getting caught by her. If we didn't tease her, we would have gotten caught by her by now. It's a tight squeeze with uh, the amount of time for breath we have, but once we make it here, collectible. And again, uh, unless maybe we can go through this vent. Maybe I was just a little dumb. No, you can't. All right. So yeah, you have to jump back in the water and die then. So now we're going to have to tease her back and forth to actually solve the puzzle. Let's check on the achievements here. We are at 9 out of 14 with 630. The next one is unfathomable, uh, which I'm just, I'm just making sure I'm not going to miss any for you guys. So for this one, we're going to pull open this, and we're going to be very quick on this. We're going to jump down, push the button, and swim back exactly where we came from. Don't try to go through the door. That's mistake number one. All right. Now we go back to the left. And we wait here until she swims back to us. Again, making sure she doesn't grab our feet. She almost grabbed my foot. And now we're going to swim back down. And we're going to push the button on the way on the way through. If we don't push the button, she follows us through the gate. So make sure you push the button and make it through. All right, so this part is uh, basically a cinematic. You can't do anything about it. Just watch. Alright, so after that cinematic type thing, we have unlimited underwater breath. Uh, to give you guys a little bit of an idea of how far we are in the story, uh, if you go to the load, you'll see how many dots we've completed. Keep in mind, not all dots are created equal. A lot of the really long dots we've already done, and a lot of the really short dots are at the end. Also, if you really don't care about completing the game, which I highly recommend you do, 
Uh, you don't have to watch the last 20 minutes of the video. Uh, there is a yellow cable there. Uh, you might want to keep that in mind, although we have about two minutes of swimming to do before we can do anything with that information. Go up top and through the building, uh, exit out the other side into another chasm, and then you'll want to swim down and to the left to find a door that we can open and kind of backtrack through a secret hallway uh, into that area. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your time with the game. So this is the, the chasm I was talking about. You'll see the gigantic butthole looking thing on the right. Uh, just swim down into the left. For this door, uh, grab onto the middle part and rotate it. And then grab onto the tab at the top and pull it down. At the end of the path is the secret in water. This one's called, uh, let's find out. This one is called unfathomable. unfathomable. Take a deep breath. Uh, the next collectible or secret or whatever we're calling them is actually pretty close by, so pay close attention. Wanting to swim through the opening, you're gonna have to time it so that you swim through right as it's kind of closing. So I didn't make it for that time. I'm gonna wait, and then I'm gonna get through uh, right as it opens. Swim in. You're gonna be a, have a little resistance as you swim in, by the way. And then make sure that once you're in, we grab onto that on the roof. This is a very important part. After the propellers or fans stop spinning, let go, swim through, and then grab on between these two. The sequence will happen again, and you'll open up the, the panel. Make sure you grab on to the most right handle or else you'll get your feet cut. If you want to see a really cool death animation, die there on purpose. Climb up through the hole. And we are now at the clock shadow puzzle, is what we'll call it. Remember this little pool that we're, we just went through for a bit? Jump up here. You'll notice that there is a spotlight that goes back and forth. Obviously, you don't get caught in the spotlight. Uh, I think I just fucked myself over. Yep, I fucked myself over. I, I crossed way too early. Uh, what I wanted to do was actually wait for the light to be on the opposite side of where I was. Um, unfortunately. So, just uh, let it pass by. Basically, when you're rotating, you want the light to be on the long path away from you. Hopefully that makes sense. So right now it's going to be to our right when we're rotating, but when it's past the halfway point, we actually want it to be to our left because it's going to give us more time to rotate. All right, all we want to do is rotate this thing to the perfect center. 
So right there, that looks about center to me. When the light is on the right hand side, go back to where you came from. It doesn't have to be perfectly center, but you want it to be pretty close. You'll drop down into a part you can swim, swim down into the hatch. By the way, you have basically unlimited breath for the rest of the game. And uh, it should be right here. If, you're, if your uh, rotation wasn't straight enough, uh, you won't be able to climb up onto this ledge and crack open this orb. Clockwork. Alright, so that should be number 11. Let's just double check for my own sanity. Yep, we have room for reflection and office space. Two more left. And then the, the mega achievement worth 90. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're, uh, we're pretty close to the end of the game. So at this point, we just want to finish this puzzle. To do so, we're going to now start rotating it to the right. And then when the light is on the left is when we'll start rotating it. Because now we have more time to rotate. Hopefully that makes sense. We will need to take two turns here. Can be a little bit tricky on predicting exactly where the shadow will be. But try your best. What you want to do is lower this enough so that you can get on the ladder and you can jump on top of it. If you rotate it all the way, it should do the trick, actually. Uh, if you're really quick, you can do this all in one swoop. I'm not that quick and I'm not that risky, so I'm going to let it pass by again. And now I have a solid like 10 seconds to do this instead of like 2 seconds. All right, here's where the game gets a little bit fun, actually, in my opinion. Jump in there. And then swim back up. Uh, don't swim down yet. We're going to start playing with physics a little bit. Bending reality. Altering the world. It's going to be quite fun. So, now that we're here, let me, re let me refresh my memory. That uh, We'll do that later. Just jump down the hole. Okay? And once we're down the hole, jump to the right. And what we need to do is uh, knock the upcoming yellow box off of its path. Hopefully that makes sense. So if we try to pull it, we can't. Essentially, what we want to do is uh, pop the lid. And then we're going to have to try to punch the box out of the air with the arm that comes out of the wall. The arm moves extremely quickly, so the timing, uh, don't really time it. Basically, as soon as the box is exactly level with the arm, that's when you want to push it. Now, angle this box right here, and then and then uh, pull the lid. And because it's angled, it should fly up and into the gap. If it doesn't work, just make sure uh, you angle it properly. From here, get the box into the light. Pull the lid. Do not stand on the box. As soon as the box lifts off and is over the little hole, close it. So that it lands on top and it's going to stay up there. Now we'll want to run to the left and we'll find a secret hatch that will allow us to swim back to where we were. And now when we run back into that room, we'll have the other box. Now, if you're smart, you'll probably already know how to finish this puzzle. Don't do it yet. Instead, pull the box all the way to the right-hand side. You notice that there is a button as well as a yellow cable, obviously signifying a collectible. Hop on the box, pull the tab, and then push the button. As soon as we land, push push the tab again. 
so that we can make our way to the right hand side. If you do it, you can actually do it probably without the second pop there, but I'm going to do it anyways. Once you're on here, just wait until the timer kind of runs out and uh, the platform will begin to raise on its own. I hope. Hmm. I apologize. You do need to click the button for the uh, platform to go back up. I was unaware of this. I somehow missed that button. I... I watched my replay from the first time I did that and I don't I don't remember pressing the button anyways now that we're up in this attic area pull the tab and uh, that's gonna be number 12 there's only one more left and it's actually kind of soon ish jump back down and now we're gonna do the box puzzle essentially we're going to switch dimensions and air is gonna start being water and water is gonna start being air hopefully that makes sense um, for this one, all you want to do is pull the yellow box inside of here and then push your big box underneath it. You might be able to do this the other way around where you push your uh, other box like you do them in the opposite order. Um, you might actually have to do them in the opposite order. Yeah, I think you do. Sorry, pull the tab, pull the box, get on the box, pull the tab. So you're basically doing like two back-to-back -back fires. And then you get into this dimension. There we go. This is by no means a speed run. If I were to do a speed run, I could probably save five or ten minutes max. Um, if it was a hundred percent speed run. Um, what do I do from here? Oh, sorry. I apologize. Go to the top and pull out the two power cores from the, uh, little engine. Spending my time talking about speed running while completely missing the objective. All right, all right, all right. So this might be the one puzzle that everybody gets stuck in. And I don't blame you. It is quite difficult. So instead of going to the right, first off, go to the left. There's a box you'll need. That might be a hint enough in its own for it to help you. Um, you're not going to use the box to wedge open the door, so yeah. Anyways, as you pull the box about halfway through pulling it, uh, the doors will open in the back. Uh, you'll have to hide behind the box in order to not get killed. It's actually faster, I think, if you are if you were to be speedrunning this game. I think it's actually faster to um, die here. Because if you die right away, you actually spawn right behind the box. And the, these guys are already like taking shit away. So it might be faster to die here, but I'm not 100% sure. Wait for them to uh, leave, obviously. So push the box as far as you can. You obviously needed to leave the room with uh, air or else the door would have closed. It's technically water, but it, it acts like air. Now you can uh, switch to air to close the door and bring the box up. Okay, climb the ladder. 
and you want to position this box directly above anywhere on this platform that the ladder leads to. Hopefully that makes sense. So right about here should be good for me. Doesn't have to be centered, but close enough. Uh, swim back down, and now what you want to do is you want to change the water level to a very specific height. What you want to do is get it so that it touches the box and the box falls. And now lower it as much as you can while still maintaining an open door on the right. So right about there should be good. Jump on the box, and if you did it right, when you jump off the box, you'll be in this area. Swim through the air, and then go back onto the ground on this platform, and walk right through. Um, I forget what to do here. Let's figure it out. I think we swim down. Yeah. All right. This one's not too bad. You do have to wait for these workers to do their job, though. Uh, they do take a little bit of time. Just make sure they leave before you start interacting with shit. I don't know what their view distance is. I haven't really tested it. As soon as they leave, go to the ground floor and push this tab up. This will allow all these guys to fall down and they'll become followers of you. Some of them, unfortunately, will disintegrate into multiple pieces and die. Once they all group up on you, bring them to the left. And let them boost you to the tab so you can pull it back down so you can uh, lower the water level, which you'll need to uh, to do for the next room. This isn't timed, so don't worry about how fast you go. Now from this part, which is the highest part of the the kind of air, have them push you up into the other dimension so that you can swim the rest of the way. You need to do this because the switch you need to hit is really high up. So you need to hit it as you're falling. Keep in mind, don't worry about the fall damage because these guys will catch you. So you won't really die. Just make sure you, as you fall, you're uh, falling straight down and you're tapping the interact button as fast as you can. And you should press the button without an issue on the way down through the hole and we continue so I believe is this the elevator section I'm gonna take a guess that it is yeah this is the elevator section this is our last uh, 13 of 13 secrets and then we have one more to finish off the game with all right uh, sit right here and let them jump you across so that they fall down into the gap once they all fall down into the gap, give them about a second just to like stand up. And then you can fall into the gap and they'll catch you. And then have them boost you up to the uh, little hole on the uh, right-hand side. Go down the ladder. And you'll find your way into the, la into the elevator. This is where it gets a little interesting. Go to the left and have all of them fall down. If you're really, really, really good, you can do the next step now. But I'm just going to show you the easy way and not even really explain it. Have them all fall down. Now run to the elevator and close the door so that at least they get split into two groups. The smallest group being of at least three people. So that's about even. It doesn't have to be even. After the second group falls on top of your elevator go back up. The reason you need at least three people is because you'll need both groups to do a jump for you. And if you have two or less, they won't be able to lift you. Uh, behind this pole, you can't see it, but I'm having them boost me for a jump. And I just jumped, landed on a yellow string, and I'm climbing it to the top. All right, now that I'm up here, I need my other group in order to catch me. 
and I'll need them to boost me to the secret. All right, now we can drop down. Hopefully the dudes underneath me catch me. That's their job. Okay, they didn't, but it's not too bad of a fall. Um, and now, get everyone in the elevator. By the way, just to show you to keep track, we're at 13 out of 14 with 9, 10 uh, gamer score. With everyone in the elevator, go down. Go to the right, and you'll need all of their help in order to get through this door, I hope. If my memory serves me correctly. Alright. Awesome. Now here is where the game can potentially get very interesting. I would highly recommend that you do play the game all the way to the end, even after I show you how to finish the game. But again, I'm not your dad, so I can't really tell you how to live your life. If you're looking for a condensed version of just the secret areas, I do have another video on my channel that only shows their locations and doesn't have the rest of the game. If you're looking for something more spoiler free, just in order to get through the game uh, and pick up the achievements without uh, any of the puzzles being solved for you. This part's all pretty linear. There's no puzzling here, and there's nothing really that can kill you. You're gonna take the yellow cart and use it in order to get up on the ladder. Now, obvi obviously, your interest would want you to go up to that class. Hopefully, your first time playing the game, you did it. It kind of builds to the ending. All right, up here we go. And then, up here we go. Swing to the pipe. Climb the pipe. through the vent. You'll automatically be crouched, so don't worry about that. Use the floor panel to get underneath. Through here and we are about to finish up all of the gamer score and achievements I think we're about an hour and a half into the recording right now uh, based on my estimates jump across and you'll notice that there is 13 conveniently placed yellow wires each one represents one of the secrets we've already attained you cannot do this unless you have all 13 of your secrets already unlocked during this playthrough once inside the room work your way to the right where you'll find this giant orb sphere energy ball thing. Go inside. There is an item inside, but you can't see yourself actually pick it up. Press X and move it slightly from the right to the middle. It'll turn orange and then it'll uh, take off all the lights and the final achievement will unlock called the last one worth 90. It comes together at this point. You do have all achievements and trophies, if the trophies are the same as the achievements, when this game does come out on the PS4, which it is apparently rumored to come out. There's about 20 minutes left in the game that I will take you through at a brisk pace, um, and I uh, would appreciate you staying. If you're not going to stay, that's totally okay. Please drop a like and share the video with a friend. These two things help me immensely in the future when I create more videos like this. Um, it lets me know what kind of content you guys like, what kind of content you guys don't like. 
Also, special shout out goes to everyone supporting me on Patreon, including the gigs and uh, Doc Cupcake eighty four, and uh, a Lemon Cupcake, as well as uh, a lot of great people that are just helping out the show so much and allowing it to be what it is. Jump across here. You can find a link to the Patreon page if you're interested in uh, supporting the show in any way. Again, never necessary, completely optional, but it's there for you if you want. Uh, put this car here, jump across to the right. And climb down. Go across the pipe, and it's about to get very, very interesting. So what you need to do here is, you'll notice that there is like waves and the turbine spinning. So get up, I just wanted to check the state of the turbine. You'll have to turn the turbine off, okay, and then wait for it to cool down. And then you get invited to Minecraft by someone, I don't play Minecraft, um, and then Pull the switch down and immediately jump into the water and start swimming as fast as you can for the uh, handle. If you're not fast enough, the turbine spins up and charges. And um, it won't allow you to swim to the handle in time. Actually, I completely fucked this up. So you actually do need to open the hatch first. That would probably help. Luckily, I didn't get killed by uh, completely forgot that step so yeah that will open the hatch which is mandatory turn off the turbine wait for it to turn off and then do that again At this point, just wait for the turbine to fully spin and for the hole to fully open. Once you let go, you'll be sucked in. Swim to the right and become one with the blob. I will keep my talking to a minimum for the rest of the video. Again, thank you guys for watching.
And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of Inside. I'd love to know what you guys think the ending is about, whether you like it or not, and what the ending means to you personally in the comments down below. I'd be very interested in hearing your opinions. To me, based on the small amount of time I've had to actually play the game and think about it, uh, there's obviously a lot of messages here, a lot of undertones, but overall, you can see that you know, doing something is always going to be easier if you're a part of something bigger and working towards a common goal instead of just being on your own and doing it. So I think that's what that's about. Uh, I don't know if I worded that properly or what the developers actually intended, but the game is over. I'm not touching my controller anymore. At this point, you literally wait for about 30 to 40 seconds for the credits to roll and it is game over. Thank you guys so much for watching again. And I'll see you in one of my future videos. Peace. Also, there is a secret ending to the game. If you've stuck around this long, you deserve to know about it. Go to the cornfield, go into the vault where the second secret was, and enter the secret code, which can be found in one of my other videos for a secret ending.